Shri Tripura Rahasyam Mahatmya Khandam Aum Shri Ganesha Sharada Guru Bhyo Namaha Namaste. So let's continue with the sixth chapter of the Mahatmya Khanda of Sri Tripura Rahasya. Thus, addressed by Dattatreya, Parashuram, the son of Jamadagni, spoke with astonishment. Recollecting the past deeds of Samvarta, Parashuram thought, Dattatreya has said this to conceal his real form and identity. It may be due to affliction caused by association with bad, lustful persons like me, the compassionate Samvarta would not tell me the truth. Deciding thus and prostrating before him, Parashuram spoke very auspicious words. O oh Lord, do not suspect me who is seeking your shelter. Destined to roam in the impenetrable forest of worldly life, which is engulfed with the conflagration of sorrow, I am scorched by the midday rays of the sun of desire. Directed by some Varta, due to my good fortune, with no other protection, I have today come to you, who are an ocean of compassion. So Parashuram is a bit surprised that Dattatreya is treating him diplomatically. You know, it, he just might have expected him to just accept him, but a guru isn't like that. A guru will always test the prospective disciple to see whether he's sincere. So it's not easy to approach a very elevated guru. They make conditions. They say, you have to follow these rules or you have to do this process, or they examine you to find out if you're sincere. Huh? When I met my Adi Guru, I was introduced by one of his childhood friends. So from the very beginning, he treated me differently. He treated me more like a son than a disciple. So in the same way, Parshuram here is reminding Dattatreya that he was sent by Samvarta. And you can look at that episode here. Why? Because the Guru gives precedence to those who come to him by referral from his trusted associates. This is only natural. Huh? If you want to meet any powerful personality, whether spiritual or material, it helps to have a referral from someone who is already trusted. Because if you have a great fortune in any dimension, whether it be material or spiritual, people are going to come and try to rip you off. <laughs> They're going to try to deceive you. They're going to try to earn your trust in different uh, cheating ways. It's happened to me many times, so that's why I'm very cautious now about who I allow to get close to me. Anyway, Parashuram says, please don't speak to me like that. I'm just here because I was referred by some Varta and I have no other protection. I'm not an agent from somebody else. So you can trust me. You can reveal your actual beingness. You don't have to maintain this disguise that you are a worldly man with attraction to women and liquor and stuff like that. You can let me in. You can confide in me as a sincere disciple. By the power in the words of Samvarta, having come to you, who are like the wish-yielding tree with its basin filled with dripping cool ambrosia, who are worthy of worship, who are attended by a swarm of servants, who are great, who are pure, I will very soon gain your grace. 
I, who have come to you as the sole refuge, should not be suspected. I have clearly understood you. You are truly my guru. Good or bad, may I follow your path. Guru is really Parashiva, who imparts self-knowledge. What benefit can be had by associating with bad persons who cannot give self-knowledge? What is the use of possessions like wealth, progeny, titles, wife, territories, and land, which cannot give self-knowledge? How can an unwise person derive happiness from immense wealth? It is similar to the benefit that a person born blind can have from thousands of lamps. Therefore, O ocean of mercy, adorable, protector of the pitiable, it behoves you to be compassionate towards me, who is purified by my surrender at your feet. This speech is just full of wisdom. Huh? It's wonderful. <laughs> Because in the context of approaching his guru and surrendering, Parshuram is giving the wisdom that he has accumulated in his prior sadhana and studies and so forth. And he's telling that actually there's nothing worthwhile in this world except associating with a realized being. And this is my experience also. I got no lasting benefit from associating with my family or my school teachers or my professional associates or, you know, so many other people in my life. Huh? Maybe I got some transient benefits, but they really weren't worth the trouble, the suffering that they brought. Why? Because they weren't self-realized and they couldn't show me the actual path. Even some of my spiritual teachers, although they benefited me, they didn't give the ultimate benefit, only one step on the way. So the ultimate benefit comes from someone who is self-realized, like my Adi Guru, Srila Prabhupada. Even though he pretended to be the teacher of a sectarian cult, Actually, he was a self-realized person and he could direct me and his other disciples on the real path. But his other disciples were mostly motivated by different kinds of greed, different kinds of desire. And ultimately they betrayed him and they simply used him for uh, advancement in spiritual status and uh, growing communities with lots of wealth and so on. So they didn't get what he had to offer. On the other hand, I was never interested in that. I was only interested in his spiritual benefits. And so he recognized this sincerity and he gave me complete carte blanche. I could go anywhere and do whatever I wanted in any of his temples. Nobody could mess with me. So. This is the kind of status that Parashuram is seeking from Dattatreya. He wants Dattatreya to trust him. He's saying, I have no other shelter. I'm not coming to you for any other purpose other than to associate with you as a realized being. I want your association. I'm willing to give up anything. I'm willing to do anything. I'm willing to follow any instruction that you give me without question, because you're the one who can actually show me the reality. You can actually bring me to the real knowledge of the path. You can actually give me enlightenment. And that's the whole purpose of this entire universe what to speak of human life on planet Earth. <laughs> so this is his plea. Please trust me. Don't put up a front. Accept me on the inner platform. Huh? Accept me as a sincere disciple and show me the way. Listening to the words of Parashuram, 
The great sage Dattatreya, the protector of the deprived, spoke with a pleased face. O son of Jamadagni, my child, you have rightly decided. Attainment of self-knowledge is the preeminent boon which is difficult to get by searching. It is a wonder that in this world man thinks about self-realization. The search for self-knowledge is not to be thought of as a small benefit. Attainment of self-knowledge is the essence and the great benefit that is truly everlasting in this human life. Verily, people continuously long for pleasures obtained through sense organs that are truly illusory in nature. Not finding solace in sense pleasures, people bound by the noose of death go from one body to another in myriad cycles. Accordingly, people always experience high, low, and middle states that are futile, as if trapped in a cog wheel. O Parasharam, I am pleased with your unwavering faith. Tell me about your desire that has brought you here. So you see, the guru, when pleased, when you pass his test, accepts you as a child. He becomes your father. He becomes your God. And he guides you in every step of your unfolding. This is the advantage of having a guru. You see, in this world, ego is the illusion that we are the doers. So actually, we're not the doers. We are only the witness. And our karma is played out in this body and in these senses and mind. And all of this simply leads to death and reincarnation in the next body. So, what are we doing here? Huh? Just chasing sense pleasures? But they come and go, you know, like the weather. Today it's sunny. Yesterday it was cloudy. Tomorrow it's supposed to rain. What's the use of it all? Huh? It's not permanent. It's not lasting. It doesn't really give us benefit. It's simply just another transient phenomenon in the ever-turning wheel of samsara. So he's saying, don't be fooled by this. Don't get caught up in chasing these transient things. Don't be misled by people who, in the name of so-called spirituality, want you to chase mystical powers or wealth or sense enjoyment or power huh, in the name of spiritual life. They're cheating you. And you're cheating yourself if you follow them. So that's why we don't offer any of these things. We simply open the opportunity that if someone comes and surrenders, whether at a distance or close up, huh, although we prefer in person, <laughs> that's kind of difficult right now, but if someone comes and actually studies this teaching and actually understands our methods, uh, every single video that we have here on this channel is a type of meditation. Sometimes people ask me, why don't you give meditation techniques? They don't get it. Every single video is a meditation technique. You take the contents and you contemplate and try to understand, and this will lead to realization. So in other words, Parashurams has passed the Tatreya's test. There's a cute bird just outside my door. <laughs> and so Parashuram has been accepted by Dattatreya. And now Dattatreya is inquiring from him, why have you come? He knows it's about self-realization. He's satisfied with that. But really, specifically, why have you come? Please tell me your story. And then we'll hear that in the next episode. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.